I'm going to take some time to play some of these clips from his sermon on Sunday morning that was just unbelievable. Just absolutely unbelievable, the things that were said. Uh, and, and to me, the proof of the accusations is in his preaching. The things that he is justifying. The way he is twisting the scriptures to justify these things. And so, uh, let's go ahead and start watching some of this. Point number one, my accusers teamed up with a literal Satan worshiping transvestite. Amen. Okay, and you know what? We could pretty much almost just close our Bibles and go home right now. All right, so I think Matt Powell said it best when he said, I don't care if they went to SpongeBob SquarePants for an interview. Stop using the distraction. This is a distraction method, okay? And those Kool-Aid drinkers out there, you fall for this. Okay? This, All this stuff about reprobates and everything, yeah, they're real, but he's been teaching for years. It's just this us versus everybody. The reprobates out to get us. The reprobates are out to get us. Well, of course the reprobates are out to get you. The thing you need to make sure you don't do is provide them ammo. And if you're beating your kids with an extension cord, and if you're you know, abusing your wife or spanking your wife or di corporal disciplining your wife, whatever you want to call it, the, the reprobates are going to go nuts with that kind of stuff. And again, the fact that your kids went to a train, I wouldn't have done that. I don't think that was the way to do it. But guess what? They did it. Now, can we have a conversation about what they brought up? Can we have a conversation about the accusations and the things that are being avoided and the things that people are backing up and the fact, too, that there are many witnesses, your family, brother and sister, that agree with them, they're scared for them. The fact that, let's, you know, everybody wants to just say their testimonies are not agreeing. And what they're doing is they're zeroing in on like these minuscule facts or statements that are in there and just picking apart. But think about this. All three of them are recounting things from their childhood. Okay, now how many of you, when you have discussions with your siblings about childhood, you know, the stories don't always completely line up. Just when you're a little kid, uh, you know, and you're going through these things, you're not going to remember everything perfectly. A detail might get exaggerated. Here's the things people want to know. Did you beat your kids with an extension cord? You know, did you bash Solomon's head into... A brick. You know, did you, you know, a, a lot of these different stories, I don't remember all of them. These are the things that we want to know about, you know, and people are very concerned if when your wife is out of line, if you feel the need and if she, it is necessary for you to physically discipline her like you do a little kid. Hey, spankings are supposed to be for little kids and they're not to, we are not to injure our children. It shouldn't take much. And then by the time they get to a certain age, you shouldn't need to do that anymore. If you need to spank your adult wife, something is very wrong. Why does your wife have a blog helping other women and helping other mothers? If she's so rotten, you need to beat the fire out of her. You need you need to spank her. You got to use that kind of thing. Listen, my wife is a strong willed woman. She's a strong woman. But you know what? She also submits to me and I've never had to physically make her submit that's never been that's never been necessary to me if i have to resort to that it's because i'm losing control and this is just a horrible testimony and let me just say that the facebook post was uh, rather disturbing and i'll read that in a little bit but let's let's go ahead and watch some more of this sermon so who who cares okay yeah i, I don't agree with who they went to but i also know your friends wouldn't help them and so and and let me tell you i have my thoughts on why the tranny was used. But let's go ahead and watch a little more. Oh, I called the preachers in the new IFB and they won't answer me. That's because you're full of crap, that's why. God's not helping me, the pastors aren't helping me. They're not helping you because you're a liar. You see, okay, sometimes in life there's disagreements with people. Okay, and so whenever that happens, when somebody is saying you did something and somebody else is saying I didn't do something, okay, and things and people want things to be made right, you need to be able to go to someone and have someone mediate the situation 
and to judge the situation. I think it'd be best in the church, you know, and they have said that there were people they reached out to in the church. Your pastor friends, that's a great place to go. They went to your pastor friends. They were all scared. And, and the reality is it wasn't because you, they were full of crap or whatever. It's because they were scared of you. That's why these friends who won't tell you what you need to hear, that's why they wouldn't go to you. Because the reality is they're scared They're scared of you. And so um, Pastor First, I think, is having problems. If any other pastors text me right now, if you are available to come on right now, I'd love to do that. What we might do is just do separate recordings, and I can upload that later because trying to do this with everyone's schedule, uh, I, I knew it was a long shot, but I wanted to at least get these things off my chest that I had. And I am going to get through this video because this is absolutely shameful. So again, you, so yeah, you're, you're getting in your pulpit and you're screaming that your kids are full of crap and that's why they didn't listen to you. But at the same time too, uh, that's your opinion and your church is used to just believing whatever you say and getting intimidated into whatever you say, especially when you scream it loudly like that. But the reality is none of them judge this thing. And the only one that did listen was a training. And let me just say this too, you know, the, it, and I haven't talked to Isaac about this. This is just from what I, I have observed. Okay? I, Isaac has obviously made some choices too, that I wouldn't agree with. And that, uh, twice dead domain channel, they went and had made a video against him because he's your son, because, you know, you put him in the spotlight. And so, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, and he is a reflection on you. And so she tried to use some of his political beliefs and things that he had said against you. And he responded and that's what got him in communication. It's not like he went, he went looking for help and then went to, this person, it just, it just kind of happened and he did it, you know? And I'm, I mean, honestly, I, I'm not saying I agree with that, but it happened. And then when it came to John, he was the one that actually reached out and was shot down. And interestingly enough, you know, he went to, uh, the same person that had talked to his brother before knowing that that had an impact and that him going on there would have a bigger impact. And so, uh, I just think it's a shame that people have to go to channels like that, you know, and even uh, like preacher boys and stuff like that. I think it's better if they can go to other Christian people. But boy, we're seeing how your crowd's treating them. And it's pretty sad. And it's pretty disgusting. Like these people have no love for your kids and they don't have to like everything that they're doing. But you, that you, you'd think there'd at least be some compassion and some sorrow there. You think there'd be some compassion and sorrow from you, and I'm just not seeing it. I'm just seeing anger and fear of you looking bad. This is shameful stuff. But you know what? People are so stupid that they don't understand this. And you know what? If you're too stupid, if at this point in the sermon, you're already too stupid to figure out who's telling the truth, please get up and just leave right now. Just get out of your seat. The piano will begin to play. Would you come and get out of here? Because you know what? I'm not here to babysit retards, okay? It's a literal Satan channel. All right, so you wanna know why you had 60 some men when you had that meeting that all agreed with you? Because you preach like that. If you don't agree with me, you're stupid, you're a retard, get out of here. You've ran all the normal people, anybody that has a will, anybody that has an opinion, you've ran them out and apparently you filled your church up with a bunch of Kool-Aid drinkers, a bunch of just betas that will go along with whatever you say. How is that an argument? Okay, that is not an argument. For you to just get up, listen to what I'm saying or you're a retard. Listen to what I'm saying or you're just stupid. This isn't proving anything. Okay, no, some people are concerned about whether or not what your children said about what is going on in your home, whether or not that's true, and you refuse to address those things, all you wanna do is talk about the platform that they went on. You don't wanna talk about the platform they went on of people that used to be in your church. They don't want you, uh, you know, you don't wanna bring up the platform they went on uh, on, on Rediscover Studios and and about that. You don't wanna, but you don't wanna bring up those things. But either way, um, just the, the intimidation. And guess what? Men of Faithful Word Baptist Church, it worked on you guys. What I mean, I'm embarrassed 
for you that you will sit there. You sat there and listen to that. How was anybody? How many? I mean, I'd, I'd like to know how many people are actually at the service. He said like 300 in there. Really? All right. Was that a Baptist 300 or an actual 300? I, I can't imagine. But again, I don't know. I don't know what they're putting in that Kool-Aid. How about this? Even the accusations that I'm being accused of are not even condemned by the Bible. How about that? How about the fact that even if all this stupid crap were true, which it isn't, it would be embarrassing. You could say it's bad. I don't like it. It's, it's you know, you're weird or whatever. But at the end of the day, I'm not even being accused of even violating the Bible. Look if you would at Exodus chapter 20. Okay. So you're, what do you mean you're not accused of violating the Bible? And then what he does, he, he goes to Exodus 20 and he starts going through the Ten Commandments. Okay, well, first off, I, I love the distraction here. Okay, nobody accused you of worshiping other gods, graven images, killing, committing adultery, stealing. Nobody accused you of any of those things. No, it's, it's beating your kids excessively. It's using an extension cord on them. It's beating your wife. It's slapping her. Not punching. I didn't. I'm not saying punching. Okay. No slapping. Are, are, are you are you slapping your wife? Because men who slap their wives are shameful, and disgusting, and repulsive, and that is not okay. That is not appropriate. That is not a form of discipline. That is that in that is a painful thing to do. It's a degrading thing to do. You don't do something like that to your wife. And I that should that should go without saying. And with because it's like his same thing with his cussing, you know, there's no such thing as cussing doctrine. Because I can't show a verse in the Bible that says, Thou shalt not say this bad word. You know, now he can use whatever profanity he wants. And that's disgusting. It, I'm, I'm sorry, the profanity is not okay. You'll never convince me that it is okay. And it is in violation of of the many principles. He wants to talk about this, the 10 commandments. And then, you know, do we need to go through the other 613, uh, you know, commandments in the law? Wait a minute. Have you ever read the new Testament? And we see that there is also what we refer to as the spirit of things. There are principles that we are to learn from these things. And so when the Bible says to give honor unto the wife as under the weaker vessel, does it really have to like tell you every way a, a person does that. You want to know one of the ways historically people have given honor unto the wife as under the weaker vessel. It's like in the cowboy days when they would lay their jacket down over a mud puddle when the, for the woman to walk across. It was when they would pick them up and carry them across the mud puddles. When they do things like that for them, it's those acts of chivalry. It was it's the opening the door for them. It's doing the heavy lifting. It's doing the protecting. It's giving honor under them and because you're the stronger one you stand out in front you get in between them in danger you fight for them you protect them you defend them and you for sure don't go around slapping them around you absolutely don't do that kind of thing that and that it, it for you to think that that's not taught in the bible again the principles are there the, the spirit is there you know, and so when the Bible talks about let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, that you know, and, and filthy communications, using sexually explicit terms all the time, and telling people and using them in a cursing way, telling people to go do that to themselves, that is disgusting, that is filthy, that is vile, and you are in violation of the Scripture. You are in violation with sound doctrine. Look up doctrine in the scriptures and look how often it talks about behavior. And when it talks about behavior, it's talking about it. it these are, it uses very general terms about servants. Obey your masters o obey what in all things. And we can make application in all these different areas. It talks about, you know, um, honoring your parents is, you know, honoring your parents. That's one, that's one law, but there are many ways that one can honor their parents. And there are many ways one can dishonor their parents. And we look at situations and we say, that is dishonoring to your parents. That is honoring to your parents. That's good. I shouldn't need to teach you these things, but you, you're acting like we have to show one of the 613 laws in the Old Testament. 
that you violated that specifically says not to slap your wife. And then you teach the psychoness that says that it's basically okay as long as you don't knock out a tooth or an eye. What in the world is going on? This and the, I, so yes, you have violated the scripture. You have violated ruling your house well, ruling your own your house while having your children sexual all the gravity, you know, being blameless. All of these things, it does not give a full list after that of ways one is not blameless, in ways one is not ruling their house well. We all have to look at these situations and we have to judge them. And the goalpost is being moved big time. And I, the reality is in the new IFB, Anderson is the goalpost. That's the reality. And so, yeah, he'll always be qualified because he is the standard of qualification to the new IFB. Even if he's slapping his wife, even if he's beating his kids and just making them bitter towards them and turning them away from the things of God. You know, you, you know, and you want to know why John has long hair and is doing a lot of these things. It's be, it's not because he doesn't know the facts of what the Bible says about it. It's because he's rebelling against you. And you know, it's my hope and my desire that enough people from his world who believe like, like you do for the most part, that they will actually act like Christians respond properly towards him and hopefully you know, get back on, on the right track. And based on the last interview, it sounds like he's coming around, but the, the guy needs some help and some prayer and I don't blame him. I for sure would need it if I grew up in something like that. And it, so, um, yeah, I am going to be supportive to your children. And I am, I, and even though I might not agree with everything they're doing, I kind of understand why I hope they get it right. But uh, at the same time, you pushed them that way. You provoked them to wrath. Okay, by, the Bible specifically says, provoke not your children to wrath. Okay? Now, do you need a list of ways to do that? Do you, you, know, you know what would have provoked me to wrath when I was growing up? Watching my dad beat my mom. That would have provoked me to wrath. Watching him excessively beat my sisters. That, that kind of thing, leaving marks on them. If I ever saw him take an extension cord to them, that would have provoked me to wrath. That would have made it very, very difficult for me to honor my father if I would have seen that kind of thing. If, he, if I'd ever heard him use the kind of language that you use towards my mother, towards my siblings, towards my sister. And boy, I you know, one thing I respect about your boys, uh, they seem very protective of their sister. I like that. I can relate with that. That's why many people are siding with your kids because that's exactly what we would do. That's how we would be. And so, you know, good good for them. Good for their uncle who is also being protective. You better believe I love my nieces. I love my nephews and I'm not some creep. And if I knew they were getting hurt, you better believe I'm going to do everything I can to protect them because I, I love them. So... This sermon just, just kept getting worse. Wait, define irony. How about pastors whose tiny churches are shrinking calling me out for being unqualified? Yep. How about that? Yeah. And I'm going to call them by name because they have called me out by name and slandered me by name. Yeah. Right? Yeah, right? And, and what's, here's what's funny is people are going to whine about me doing this, even though these guys have called me out by name, slandered me by name. Now, now everybody's going to get mad that I'm naming their names. Okay, how about Pastor Jared Pozarski in Fresno, who's been pastoring the church for five years and is running about 15. And every time I go there, the church is smaller than it was before. The church is smaller than when it started. Fact, I've been there. Have you been there? It just keeps. So the pastor of the incredible shrinking church is he's qualified. He's super qualified, but I'm not qualified. I have been successfully pastoring for 18 and a half years, but I'm not qualified. Isn't that amazing? But then the qualified pastor is pastor of the Incredible Shrinking Church. How about the other Incredible Shrinking Church? Pastor Salvador Alvarez in Houston. Who? <laughs> pastor who? Pastor Salvador Alvarez, who got ordained three weeks ago. I think he has like two toddlers. He got ordained about three weeks ago. But you know what? He's been running that church for the last five months. And from what I've been told and from what I've seen with my own eyes, 
That church has gotten smaller under his leadership. Now, look, I'm not saying it's all about numbers, my friend, but you know what? Maybe you should figure out whether you're qualified before questioning my qualifications. And, and how about this? And look, I'm not mad at these guys. I, actually, I am mad at these guys. But what I meant to say is, I do not believe that these two guys are bad guys. Amen. I believe that they are saved. I believe that they love the Lord. I. All right. And you have to put, forgive me for the timing not being right. I downloaded the video and that's the way it was. So first off, uh, Pastor Salvador, who? Uh, you, you know what that's code for? That, that means Pastor Salvador is somebody who hasn't done anything crazy and weird and bizarre that has gone viral because that's how you get known in the new IFB. You do something crazy, weird, bizarre, shock jockish, and you go viral and then everybody knows who you are and you're a big hero. Maybe you don't know who he is because maybe he's being normal. Maybe he's just preaching regular stuff. Maybe he's not being a shock jock. Maybe he's not being sensational. And so because of that, you don't know who he is. He's not really on your radar. Did you ever think about that? Because frankly, most of these guys that we know and that we talk about, we know when we talk about them because they're always doing dumb, crazy stuff. That's why we know them and talk about them. So maybe the guy is just normal. And to just go attacking the size of their church like that, that's, that's ridiculous. There, do you realize there's tons of churches that are way bigger than yours? There's tons of, there's IFB churches that have thousands in them. There's mega churches that have thousands and tens of thousands in them. You're still meeting in a storefront in a strip mall. They can talk about that kind of thing. But wait, 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 but no, you know, you, but then what you're, they're all going to do. Oh, but wait, look at all the soul winning we're doing. Yeah, exactly. You've created this system, these qualifications where you will definitely be the greatest. That, that, that's what you've, that's what you've done. But then when all of a sudden it suits you to talk about numbers, size of church and things like that, you'll use it. That's ridiculous. It maybe, you know, Fresno is a really tough area. I don't know. I'm not familiar with California. I wouldn't want to pastor a church in California. I wouldn't want to start a church in California. Uh, maybe, maybe he's having a tough time. I don't know. I don't know Pastor Pizarski uh, hardly at all. I'm not familiar with his church. I don't know anybody in his church. But I don't know. Maybe he's having a hard time getting normal people in his church through the regular methods because he's got a bunch of weirdo new IB freaks scaring everybody off. And the stories that I've heard about things that go on in a lot of these churches and the way they scare off visitors that I've even observed being at some of these churches before, maybe that's why he's struggling. Maybe the reason he his church isn't growing is because of your fruit that's in his church. Did you ever think about that? Because even when it comes to our church, yeah, we've had a lot of people that have come through our church through your recommendation, but I don't know if it helped our church grow or not because we've had a lot of normal people that got scared off too. And you know what? And I thank God for the good ones. And, and we do, we have some terrific people that are in our church, but boy, some of the nut jobs that we have had in our church and even in Pastor Shelley's video that he did, he talked about how some of just the craziest, most horrible people he's ever met, you know, we're from the new IFB. I forgot how he said it. I, I didn't, I'm, I'm not doing an exact quote, but he said something along those lines. And listen, I've been the IFB my whole life. And I've heard my whole life, the gospel light attracts all kinds of strange bugs, but nothing attracts the kind of bugs that new IFB does. And it is freakish. It is psycho. And you know what is so fascinating to me? Some of the junk that we've dealt with in our church in the last couple of years too. You know, when people hear about it, the first question I always ask, was it new IFB guys? And of course, the answer is always absolutely yes. And you know what? Some of these guys' big problems, big problems they had with me is the stuff that I am that I preach in complete opposition to what you are when it comes to especially the wife and how you treat your wife. They got absolutely triggered by that teaching because they listened to junk like that. I could tell all kinds of stories right now. I could tell you, a st I, I, I don't even know if I, you know, I am going to tell a story because y'all need to hear this. I talked to one guy last time I talked to him, horrible problems that he was having in his marriage because he listens to your guys' preaching and it was devastating in his marriage. And I was, and he wasn't even in our church anymore. I'm trying to help this individual. I'm trying to tell him what to do. And one of the things I told him, I said, you have got to stop listening to new IFB preaching when it comes to marriage. Their preaching is terrible. 
on that. And it was terrible what was going on in their marriage. And some of the stuff that he was doing is the kind of stuff that you guys teach and promote and say is okay. And let me just say, without getting very specific, that story ended tragically. And one of the last things I told you, you've got to stop listening to New IB preaching on the family. It, it's it's terrible. And it's shameful stuff. And so again, yeah, some of these churches, if they stay in good standing with you, they can keep the Pastor Anderson listeners. But if they start, you know, drifting away from you, they, you know, they're gonna probably lose those those people at the same time. But you know what, guys? Just get rid of them. Lose them. You'll be better off. Without them, you're never going to get normal people in your church when you have guys that behave this way. And again, there, there's so many stories I could tell people that have reached out to us, just some of the weird things that go on. Again, so even if you convince me that there is a time, that let's just, for sake of argument, let's say you convince me that a father has the authority to leave stripes on the back of his son and, and his wife as well. Hey, we do see some pretty severe punishments in the scriptures. Now, I think it's clear that most of those are ones that are dished out by the government, like the death penalty, like leaving stripes and things like that, and in a rod to the fool's back. I do not believe in taking a rod to your son's back, but I do believe there's people within our world that could definitely use a rod to their back when it comes to certain crimes. But even in that, those cases, you would bring them before judges, and they would they would decide how many stripes and how many uh, wax with the rod or whatever depending on the crime. And so even and so the thing is in those cases it was the government, but even if you convinced me and you're not going to, but if you did, the the father has the authority to just beat the tar out of his kids and beat him black and blue, beat his wife up as long as he doesn't knock out a tooth or an eye. My question is are you do you need to do it that often? I mean, what made you beat him back black and blue? Were they physically assaulting people in school or in their neighborhood? I mean, there's some, like, I think some of these kids who bully people, they ought to be punished severely that do physical things, people, but, or did you just beat them black and blue because it made you mad? Because the punishment doesn't really fit the crime in that situation. So I don't know. It just see all of this. It just seems excessive. And yeah, we see the death penalty in the Bible. But that doesn't mean the government just gets to go kill whoever they want because we see the death penalty in the Bible. It's like you see some, you know, you see mocking in the Bible. You see Elijah mocking the prophets of Baal. Now we can mock whoever we want because Elijah mocked. Right? No, just because something is permitted sometimes, it does not mean it is always appropriate. And if it is a normal thing in your home where you got to beat your kids that bad, I don't think you have your house in control. Something's very wrong with how you're raising your kids. If you have to beat your wife... I think something's very wrong in your marriage, and I don't think you ought to be giving advice. So let's watch some more. But picking on the size of these guys' church, that that absolutely made me sick. Uh, that's disgusting. And then taking credit for everyone that's in their church. No, their churches are probably staying small because of you. These guys just need to just break free, get rid of the freaks. You are ne you're never going to get normal people in your church if you let these people come in and be freaks. Don't, wor don't worry about it. You'll be better off without them. I've already proven that I'm qualified. Yeah. Amen. Pastor Jason Robinson in West Virginia, I saw him online promoting the tranny video. And let's just go back to point number one. <laughs> if, you're, if you're posting a video of a transvestite, you're not right with God. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Okay. Do not miss. So again, distraction. He's promoting the tranny video or whatever. Just, again, just set on scores. You, you know what's, you know what we're seeing happening right now? And you're going to see this, I believe it's in the next clip too. This is what's happening. The man is spiraling out of control. And you know what he's going to do? He's, he's, he's going to try to take the entire new IFB down with him. Remember when Jim Jones realized that he was in trouble? What did he, what did he do when he realized, when he knew he was done, when he knew his empire was crumbling, what did he do? He made the Kool-Aid. And you know what? You know, why, why did he need to kill everybody else? Why couldn't he just kill himself? You know why? Because he, he, was, he was so horrified by losing everything he had, he was going to make sure he took it with him. 
That's how, that's how these people are. He was going to take it with him. And Anderson does see himself as the leader of the new IFB and responsible for all these churches and everyone that is in these churches. And if he's going down, he's taking everything down with him. And let me tell you something. If he can take everything, whatever he can take down, just understand it's not legit. It is of Anderson. And I'll, and I'll say more about that as we watch this next clip. But I'm seeing a guy who, this is, this is what's happening. If he goes down, he's taking everything down with it. This point. This is a really key point here. This is a key point. If I'm supposedly unqualified now, that means I was unqualified in 2010. <laughs> How about that? Because of the fact that a lot of these accusations are about stuff that supposedly happened 10 or 15 years ago. It's not like my marriage or my parenting has changed any time recently. <laughs> They're bringing up crap from 10, 15 years ago, exaggerating, embellishing, blowing it out of proportion, because that's how stories tend to get 10 or 15 years later. They sort of take on a life of their own. You get people talking to each other and riling each other up, egging each other on with these wild stories. That means that if I am supposedly unqualified now, I was unqualified when after the tribulation came out. I was unqualified when the Revelation series came out. I was unqualified when New World Order Bible versions came out. I was unqualified when Marching to Zion came out. I was unqualified when Babylon USA came out. I was unqualified when Beyond Jordan came out. My home has not changed. It's not like I just started some radical regime in my house or something like that. And these kids are even saying, oh, my parents have mellowed out. That means I guess if I'm unqualified now, I guess I was super unqualified in 2010, 11, 12, 13. So that means I was unqualified before the soul winning marathons across America even started. I guess I was unqualified before any of these mission trips. I guess I was unqualified before winning about 200,000 people to the Lord. And by the way, you know what our church was running in 2010? About 50 to 60 people. But it's amazing how as soon as I started getting really unqualified, <laughs> the church just started exploding in growth and we started just getting just multitudes saved and baptized and doing all these great works and, and seeing all these churches started. The very churches that are now, you know, uh, throwing me under the bus when literally... Their church has literally been founded by faith forward listeners. And, and All right. So notice how he said this is a key point. This is what he's setting up for you. And this is where I want to help you pastors that are still in the new IFB that I believe one of the reasons you're on the fence right now or even being quiet right now is because I think you, I think you drank his Kool-Aid yesterday. I think you fell for the, what he just spun right there. It, now, and I've preached about this. I've talked about this. I've been criticized by people who knew I be for this for a long time. But this is what I've, I, I believe this, and I'm right about this. I'm not going to do a full doctrinal discussion on this thing. But let me just briefly explain what's going on. And I dare you to fact check me on this. But in the new IFB world, there is an uh, excessive focus on the individual that God uses in bringing people to salvation. There is an excessive focus on even the pastor in the church. And so we, we see the new IB, they're always arguing about whether or not a lost person can get somebody saved and they, uh, you know, whether you have to have a King James, all that kind of stuff. I've made clips talking about these things before. And, and so here's what Pastor Anderson's doing because everybody's his fruit. He's the one that got everybody saved. If he's not legitimate, then are you sure your salvation is legitimate because he's the one that got you saved also. And not even just that. I don't think so much that because I don't, I haven't seen anybody claim he's not saved, but even when it comes to ordination and the church, if he was unqualified, if he was illegitimate, then doesn't that make all the churches he started illegitimate? Well, yeah, if you have the new IFB teaching when it comes to, you know, um, you know, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit and evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit. And the way they apply that, which I, I believe is wrong. Here's what everybody needs to get a hold of because everybody's acting like if Pastor Anderson goes down, faithful word goes down, the new IFB goes down, soul winning ceases to exist, nobody's getting saved anymore, all that kind of stuff. Here, here's what we need to understand. Okay, first off, okay, 
Jesus saves. Okay, People are saved because they believe on Christ. And people get saved because of the work of the church, of the local church. I believe that Jesus Christ is the head of a church. And I believe every church has flawed individuals in it. Every church has problems in it. But I believe very strongly in the authority of a church. And I do, and I am not going to argue with anybody on this, but there are things that I am aware of that I'm I'm, I'm not even going to get into right now. But I do think the faithful word is and has been a legitimate church. Okay, I, I do believe that uh, about them. And so I believe that faithful word, Baptist church, has helped reach thousands of people. I believe faithful word, Baptist church, has done a lot of great works. It's never about just one man. It's never about, it's, and if it is about one man, is it really a church? A church is, it a, con, is a congregation. It's an assembly. And in a congregation and assembly, they have different offices within that church. And the pastor is an office that is within the local church. And so sometimes in a legitimate church, you have members within that church that have some serious problems. In fact, you can even have members within that church that are even lost. And But it doesn't mean that the work of the entire church is illegitimate. If it is a church that is founded by Jesus Christ, it is a legitimate church. If the word of God is being proclaimed from that church, you know, then people are going to get saved and it's, it's going to do a work. And so the th- truth is, sometimes within that church, you can even have a pastor in there who maybe does not quite meet the qualifications, maybe is disqualified or if he's becoming disqualified. And God is often merciful in those situations. Whenever churches mess up, whenever people mess up, God doesn't just put the candlestick out like that. He gives them space to repent. We see that in Revelation. Some of these churches had serious problems. And I believe that when it comes to faithful word, there has been a problem with the pastor for years. And I believe God has been very gracious. And I believe God has given him much space to repent, but he has refused to repent. And so you know what? It is being made manifest. It is being exposed. And so the reality is, it's not about Pastor Anderson. It's about Faithful Word Baptist Church, which is ultimately about Jesus Christ. And so if, so for example, I had somebody that used to be in our church that was uh, baptized at Faithful Word by Tyler Baker. Now, at the time, okay, now I believe Tyler Baker is a saved individual. I'll get blasted for saying that by the new IFB. I don't care. At the time, we had the, the, the Trinity controversy was going on, and we had all declared him a reprobate, okay? And so someone who was in our church, he was just like, yeah, he's like, I, you know, I've, I've been saved, I've been baptized, but I was baptized by Tyler Baker. And it's like, does a baptism count if it's by an unsaved guy? Okay, and again, don't get me don't don't take this the wrong way. I, I believe he's saved. But at the time, at the time I wondered, okay? And here's what I told him. This is what this is what I believe. I said, baptism is not about the individual that baptized you. Okay, we're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I believe that God gave the church the authority to baptize people. And so I believe churches have the authority to baptize people, and I believe that the church has the authority to to commission someone within that church to do that work. For some churches, they might just be the pastor or deacons or someone ordained. But I believe a church in reality has the authority to choose whoever they want to do something like that. And so because I believed that it was a legitimate church, even if I thought Tyler Baker was lost, I told him, I said, your baptism is fine. It's not about Tyler Baker. Okay, It's ultimately, who'd you get baptized for? You got baptized to identify yourself with Jesus Christ. And so, and, and you got baptized in a local church, underwater, by immersion. So even if Tyler Baker's lost, then your baptism is legit. You don't need me to baptize you again. And say, so, Because again, for me, it's about the structure. It's about the organization. And so as a pastor, I perform a role in that church. But what I do, I do on 
behalf of the church. When it comes to people that I've ordained, I have wanted our church to get to know these people. I've wanted our church to have, to be aware of what's going on. I wanted our church to be behind me doing these things because I don't believe Tommy McMurtry ordains people. I believe Liberty Baptist Church does, and I am the officer that performs that ordination in the church. And so I want our church to be a part of it. And so there are there, the, the authority that I, that I have in my church is given to me by the congregation. And the work that we do, because we are a legitimate church, is legitimate. And if at some point I start, I go do something, let's say I go commit adultery, but nobody finds out, biblically I'm disqualified. Doesn't mean that if I'm still preaching the word that pe- people can't still be getting saved. If our church is doing a work and sowing that people can't still be accomplishing things, we're, we're, we're still doing a good work. But understand, because we have that sin within the church that God knows about, God is going to reveal it at some point. And hopefully, it will just be me that gets in trouble. But let me tell you something. If our church finds out and they don't do the right thing, now they are accountable. And so faithful word, you all didn't know this stuff was going on all these years. You're a legitimate church. Okay. It, 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 Pastor Anderson's little routine there. I was always unqualified. You know, I don't believe God hell is going to hold that against you because you didn't know, but now, you know, and now as a church, you need to do the right thing. It's not about the individual. It's about the church. It's about Jesus Christ is about the authority of the word of God and the fact that people are making exceptions because of Pastor Anderson and because of his accomplishments. Wait a minute. Again, who accomplished it? I remember a verse in the Bible that says, without me, you can do nothing. And he, and that's when he's talking about the vine and the branches too, by the way. The reality is God sets the qualifications and we don't just get to go accomplish some great thing and then declare ourselves exempt. And this idea too, that he was qualified, that those are just qualifiers for a guy getting started and they don't apply to a guy who has the office and has proven himself is absolutely ridiculous. No, and here and there is a huge difference between being unqualified and disqualified. Huge difference. And I and so I believe there are many people who are unqualified in the sense that maybe they haven't had enough training, you know that they are a novice. They haven't been saved very long. They're not a real mature Christian. And being a novice, that is not a negative trait. Being unqualified is not necessarily a negative trait because as long as they are working towards it. There's a big difference between being unqualified and disqualified. And so no matter how qualified you are, no matter how long you've been qualified, if you go and you commit certain sins, you then become disqualified. That's the way these things work. And nobody's saying that you were unqualified. We're saying you were disqualified. And even if you put one over on everybody for all these years, just understand, again, I, I don't know what's been going on all those years. You know, but may, again, sometimes God's merciful. He's long suffering. He gives us space to repent of things. But either way, it's been manifest now. The cat's out of the bag. And you know, you love to compare yourself to David. All your buddies love to compare yourself with David. But isn't it interesting too, that when David went through the things he went through, it was because of sin. He was being judged because of his sin with Bathsheba. Now you don't have any sin to be judged of. You just have an Absalom, you know, but you don't have a Nathan and you you don't have any sins that you're guilty of in this situation. But isn't it interesting too, that one of the things that was prophesied to David, and I'm not going to quote this exactly right, but basically how people were going to lay with his wives before the son. He was basically, which was a publicly humiliating thing. And that's what we're seeing happen with you is your sons are publicly humiliating you. You, and that's what happens when you try to conceal sin, when you try to hide it, then God exposes it. And Faith Forward Baptist Church, Liberty Baptist Church, any church that is listening to this, understand that when sin is re- revealed and you expose it, it's only a matter of time before God exposes it. And when God exposes it, it's bad. And if you don't think that God would use a tranny to do something like that, um, that reminds me 
of Habakkuk, when he is praying for God to do something about Israel who's being wicked. And then God basically tells him, I'm going to do something about it. And he tells him what he's going to do. And one of the objections that Habakkuk had was that God was uh, that God was going to use the heathen. He was going to use a nation that was more wicked than the people of Israel. But what did God go on to tell him? God basically told him, hey, yeah, I, they are a more wicked nation, but understand, I am also going to judge them. I'm going to use them to punish you, and then because of them touching my people, I'm going to judge them. And so the reality is when it comes to uncovering these things, taking you down or whatever, you know, again, I do believe Pastor Ann is the same man who's done a lot of good things. And so who is God using? God's using an evil person. God is using one of his enemies, one that he is going to deal with one of these days. He doesn't want to punish all of us. I'm not the one that revealed these things. I'm not the one that uncovered these things. I'm just one trying to preserve the reputation of independent fundamental Baptist. And, and so the one that took you down, the one that humiliated you and exposed you is somebody who God is going to destroy one of these days. That's pretty consistent with the character of God and how he has typically worked throughout time. And so I, I definitely think that what we're seeing here is of God. And so again, with the technical difficulties, I'm not going to be able to have any of the pastors on that I wanted to. Maybe we'll do a separate recording and release that some other time. But let's go ahead and watch uh, the rest of this video. And I think I, I think I might have one clip, maybe two clips left. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. And you know what I want to say to some of these people that are attacking me is I want to say that if you think I'm unqualified, that means that I was already unqualified before you even got saved listening to my preaching. And you know what's funny? They're like, well, why would your kids rebel against you? I don't know. You're my spiritual kid. Why are you rebelling against me, punk? You want to know what makes a child be ungrateful, undeserving brat who rebels against their parent? Go look in the mirror if I won you to the Lord. Because I can't even count how many of these people are like, you won me to Christ, Pastor Anderson, but you're so bad. Amen. You are literally exactly like my rebellious physical children. You're just the rebellious spiritual children. It's the same exact thing. I don't know if y'all caught that, but first off, okay, uh, people not qualified for the office of a bishop can get people saved for sure. Okay. So uh, I don't know. It sounds like what he's trying to do is like, if I'm not qualified, then would you even be saved? Because here's the thing. Saved people know they're saved. So what he's doing is he is connecting, he is making more of a connection than necessary to their salvation. Jesus saved them. Jesus uses people. Jesus uses the church. But again, in the new IFB, they put an overemphasis on, on the soul winner. And because of that, you know, it, you know, people do, they just see themselves under them way more than necessary. Again, there's these principles in the Bible and the new IFB always just takes them too far. But here's the thing, too. He brings up how his spiritual children are rebelling, just like his physical children. So wait a minute. It sounds like, then, according to what you're saying, that the way things are going on in your spiritual family are very reflective of what's going on in your physical family. Your physical family is out of control. Your spiritual family is out of control. That reminds me of a verse. If a man don't know how to take care of his own house... How should we take care of the church of God? So if these rebellious spiritual children of yours are so out of control, uh, just like your kids, doesn't that prove the point? Aren't you, aren't you just pr proving the point for you? But again, he, he wasn't thinking about that because he's trying to, again, to th this is manipulation is all there is to it. Just full-blown manipulation. So here's the final clip. You can go back and listen to 2,000 hours of my preaching online and you will not find me tooting my horn. Yeah, right. But I am tooting my horn this morning because I am being hit with the most ridiculous attack. And I, I feel like this attack, you know, maybe this is me just being a little bit dramatic. 
I feel like it's worse than anything that I can even find in the Bible. Because I'm looking at the story of Absalom and I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't have sex with Bathsheba and I didn't kill Uriah. <laughs> so what are, what's going on here? And so look. So what he is going through, his attack is worse than the ones in the Bible. Okay, it, again, he's always David. He always gets to be Paul. Okay, so far he's been Saul or I've been Saul and he's been David in a sermon. He's been David and I've been, I've been uh, Shimei in a sermon. And um, also um, he was David and uh, Adam Fannin was Sheba. <laughs> uh, remember that, that, that sermon years ago, every character in the Bible is pastor and every good hero in the Bible. It's always pastor Anderson. It's always pastor. Anderson. he's never the villain. Okay. It's always the rest of us. We always get to be the villains. We never get to be the good guy. One time I want to be David one day. One time I want to be the good guy. And, and one of these stories, it's so interesting the way that works, but really what you're going through is worse than what Joseph went through when his brother sold him into slavery, when he got lied about by Potiphar's wife, when he got thrown into prison and you, you haven't even resisted the blood yet. I mean, you, what, what in the world people in the Bible died in a lot of these attacks. I mean, have you ever read Hebrews 11 and looked at some of the things that they went through, but wait, here's why what he went through is worse because what he's going through is exactly like David and Absalom, the long haired son going after his dad, but David deserved it. Pastor Anderson doesn't pastor Anderson's done everything. This is crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, and the fact that his congregation fell for that and went along with that and start cheering for him at the end when he says he's not stepping down is insanity. Because here, here's the reality. I explain what I believe the church is, but in faithful word, it's Pastor Anderson. He's the head. He's the authority. He's the system. He's the structure. Everything that gets done, you know, it, it, it's all on him rather than on the church and they can't get rid of him. That's all there is to it. He's already purged that church from any dissenters on anything. Anyone who thinks for themselves, he's purged it by referring to everybody as stupid. And he's done this kind of thing for years in his preacher. You don't like it. Get out of here. It's like, well, wait a minute. Uh, what you're saying is not even biblical. What you're saying doesn't even make sense. And so, you know, I think I've gone long enough on this, but I, let me just say that um, new IFB churches, you are not obligated to follow him. If you admit the obvious that he is disqualified, it does not delegitimize your church. It does not revoke your ordination. Followers online, it does not revoke your salvation. It, it, it doesn't do that. And you don't, don't let him manipulate you into thinking that, but I, I believe that's one of the main things that's causing people to behave the way they are. And it's weird and it's crazy. So far, the only, I mean, you know, it's, it's crazy. He has pastors defending him. Mejia in his sermon, I wish I had time to talk about some of the stuff from that. Listen, that guy is just an absolute punk that will defend anything that guy does. How was that? I mean, Anderson's sermon was definitely worse than me. He is that he did, but it, was, it wasn't even a sermon. It's just, I want to talk about Pastor Tommy. I want to praise Pastor Anderson. I can't really find anything in the Bible that Pastor Tommy actually did wrong. So let's go to a story in the Bible about David and Shimei and let's make a comparison. Let's let's stretch things and make a comparison. And now, you know, when you're thinking about David, we're thinking about Pastor Anderson. We're thinking about Shimei, we're thinking about Pastor Tommy. And now I'm just I'm throwing stones. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing all, I'm rejoicing. I'm doing all these things. I'm kicking them while he's down. And that is not the case. I sent pastor Anderson a message the day before I put that post out, just begging him to step down because I wanted him to be able to salvage his ministry, preserve his legacy. I was convinced from what just watching what was going on. His children were going to continue pursuing him, going after him and revealing more things, embarrassing him more, making the cause of Christ look worse if he if he continued going. I believe it, I believe it was very clear that he was unqualified. And if he would have stepped down 
and maybe apologize to his kids for the wrong that he had done, for having his priorities wrong, then maybe they could heal and go forward. And then later, there would still be many more things that he could do within the ministry. There's so many ways you can serve. Not everybody has to be a pastor. And I, I did not want him to continue getting humiliated because the reality is it makes all of us look bad, especially the more we agree with him. And I agree with him on a lot of stuff. I believe I agree with him on salvation and soul winning and prophecy and Israel and many other things. And, and I get, I get lumped in with them all the time and I don't, I don't like that. I don't really think that's fair, but he is somebody that I supported at one time, but I'm telling you right now, not only am I here today to say that I absolutely do not support, I do not believe anybody should support him. I believe that he is in rebellion. He is spiraling out of control. I believe that the behavior is just going to get crazier and it's going to get weirder. And this is what I believe. Many people believe that faithful word is going to go on. And, and you know what? They probably are. But here's what's going to happen if he continues to go forward. The dust will settle. Things will calm down. But over the years, we're going to find out about more and more abuse taking place within the church taking place within the churches associated with the new IB. We're going to hear about more guys beating their wives. We're going to hear horrible stories about people beating their kids. Things are going to make news, and it's going to make the cause of Christ and independent fundamental Baptists look bad as a result. And I think, too, because he's not repenting of these sins, I think he's going to get in deeper sins. I think he's going to embolden him. He's going to do more things, and there's going to be greater humiliations that's going to come. That's how these things go. Anytime in the in, in our Baptist history, whenever we have covered for things, when we've covered for abusers, it's created a culture where we where we cover for these things, and these things start happening more and more all the time. And while this is not a situation of sexual perversion or anything like that, we do know that in the past that Baptists have stood with and they've covered up guys who've committed adultery, guys who've molested children, and what has happened in those systems where that kind of thing is done. They fight the battle, they move on, everybody forgets about it, but then guess what? We see more and more stories popping out later that are all connected to that. And I'm telling you right now, we in the future are going to hear many stories horrible stories, even worse stories about physical abuse towards wives and children from people associated with the new IFB. Do you, do you want that? Hey, Verity, Stronghold, First Works, Steadfast, whoever else I'm forgetting about, Shield of Faith. Do you want that connected? Do you want that kind of thing in your church? Because you keep promoting that kind of preaching and that kind of man, that's the kind of people that you're going to have in your church. And over the long term, you're going to make the cause of Christ look bad. You'll get some people saved along the way, but you're also going to be, as these stories come out in a bigger way, you're going to turn a lot of way, people away from the things of God. And that's been going on in the IFB world for a long time. They are these stories that keep coming out, these scandals, it's turning people away from good IFB churches. And I believe it's because there, we've been guilty of not calling these things out enough. And so I'm not going to do that. If As long as I have a voice, as long as I have a platform, I'm not going to do that. And I don't care if it doesn't make me popular. You know what it's going to do? It's going to scare the abru abusers and the freaks away from me. And that's exactly what I want. I, if you're an abuser, if you're a pervert, I hope you're terrified of getting connected to me in any way. Because you know I will rat you out so fast it's not even funny. And I don't care... Listen, I don't care if I have to rat you out to Eric Swarzynski. I'll do it. Oh, yeah, he's apostate and a reprobate. So, so what? You need to be exposed. I mean, I'll just do it myself. I don't need him, but if I wanted to, I, I think I can do that. And uh, and so just not to be a warning. All those two who like new IFB preaching, if you ever think about coming to my church or whatever, just understand this type of th stuff is not acceptable. If you agree with it, we don't want you in our church. If you promote it, we don't want people like you in our, our church. I will tell the authorities if I find out you're doing that kind of stuff in your home because you ought to be in jail. You ought to be whipped. You know what ought to happen to wife beaters? They should get pulled out in the public square 
and they should get an extension cord taken to their back. If there is someone out there who is like seeking guidance right now uh, and you need some help, I will be happy to help you, but I don't want to I don't want to keep talking about this. The Lord has really been blessing in our church and I want to stay concentrated on what's going on here because um, this is the work the Lord gave me to do. The internet stuff, it's a, it's a side thing. It's a hobby. And I don't want it to take over. I don't want it to uh, consume too much of my life. I would rather talk about the book of Hebrews that I, that I need to get to. I would rather talk about uh, Bible prophecy and things like that. And so, um, yeah, this is all you're going to get. If the new IFB starts put more videos and accusations, if Bruce Mejia wants to go and act like a punk and say more stuff about my wife, like the scared little punk that he is. Yeah, he gets up and he talks trash about my wife in church and he supports a guy who smacks women around. He has no respect for women because he's a punk. I said it. I believe it. I think it. It's ungodly. It's disgusting. And I do think the people in your church are freaks and weirdos and people that support this stuff. I do think Kool-Aid drinker is a good description of you people. And you will, you will go down with Anderson and he will gladly take you down. He's going to, if he's, if he's going down the whole new IFB is going with him. And if he can take it down, just understand he can only take down what's of Anderson. He can't take down what's of Jesus Christ. So this is where you're going to find out what your church is made of. And I highly recommend purging Anderson from your church and being more Christ-centered. And I think you'll be better off. So I know I, I know this was a little harsh, but I, uh, I believe it was important. And I, uh, again, I did want to say to, to Solomon, to Isaac, to John, to Miriam, I've got your back. But I do want to give you one piece of advice. I do. I am thankful that you guys have exposed this. And I believe you have done it. I, I wouldn't recommend for you, though, to continue pursuing this. I think it will, I think it will weigh on you. I think it will, uh, it, it's a burden that you don't need to carry. You've, you've done everything you can do. You've got the word out to the people who need to know. Um, there's, there's, there isn't anything else that you can do. And so uh, right now you need to take care of yourself. And I, I hope you will not let your father's version of Christianity turn you away from true Christianity. And I, I hope you will stay faithful to Jesus Christ. I hope you'll get in a good church. And, um, and yeah, you guys definitely deserve better. And I feel bad that, you know, I, I, I didn't know. Okay. I, I mean, I didn't know, but when I, when I saw these things, it just, it hurt me for you guys and especially, especially Miriam too. Again, we all, uh, as fathers, you know, we're definitely more, I think sympathetic with young girls cause we have daughters. And if you could watch something like that and it not rip your guts out, something's wrong with you. It definitely ripped my guts out. And, um, I, I do appreciate the boldness. And I think part of pastor Anderson's downfall is his kids are, he's got smart kids. Uh, he, he does have well-spoken kids and, um, they, they did good in exposing these things. And, um, I, I appreciate that, but I do, I, I do hope you guys will move on from this. You know what? Let everybody else take it from here on out. If the people in faithful word Baptist church won't get rid of your debt, that's on them. It's not on you. You did the right thing. If the other pastors won't do the right thing, it's not on you. That's on them. And so you did the right thing. If nobody else does the right thing, you just move on and go forward with your life. And I hope you do well. And I do. I hope at some point you can reconcile with your parents and, and get things right. I hate seeing I hate seeing families broken up. I absolutely hate it. I despise it. And it's a very common thing within the new IFB. There's this epidemic of new IFB members all having families that are reprobates. Interesting how that works. And so anyway, God bless. I appreciate everybody watching this. This, I hope and pray, is my final word on the new IFB.